All right. Hello, everyone. This next session of our Canvas Best Practices series is taking a look at the best practices of Canvas page design. And we're going to spend some time talking about when and how to use pages and, and best practices of pages as a whole. But we're also going to talk about best practices of the rich content editor. So even though we're talking about this in the context of pages, really the rich content editor is all over the place in Canvas. So a lot of what we're going to be talking about can be really generalized to other places within Canvas. So one of the first things that we really want to emphasize is the difference of when to use pages versus assignments. We see a lot of teachers using assignments for, for things that really should be pages. Um, and the benefit of using a page over an assignment is it doesn't clutter your gradebook. Um, so things that are essentially one-way information, things that the students do not have to submit anything to, that should really be a page. Great examples are things like course-long information, unit intro and summary pages, class resources, notes, readings, videos, rem reviewer remediation resources. And this flowchart really identifies kind of what, what the decision you should be making is regarding whether it should be an assignment or a page. It's also super important to remember that when you come into Canvas Live to add something to your module, even though the default is to create an assignment, remember that this is a drop-down menu. And I'm actually going to stop presenting and share my entire screen because I'm realizing you are not seeing it activate as a drop-down menu. So let's try this again here. So this, remember, is a drop-down menu. So you can quickly change assignment to page and create a brand new page directly from your modules. It would live in both your pages index and your modules, just like an assignment. But there's a lot of benefit to using pages over assignments. Um, one of the downsides of pages is that pages cannot yet be differentiated. I do believe Canvas is working on this right now. Um, so if you are looking to push out content to just for some students, maybe just to a section or as a remediation resource that's just to a particular student or an enrichment resource, there is a workaround to actually create an assignment. But under the grading details where it says display grade as, change that to not graded. You'll notice it actually takes away all of the other assignment details except for the points and the assigned to box. Um, it also does not have that assignment show up in your gradebook. So it's a great way to kind of use a workaround for differentiating pages. Um, likewise, if you have something that you've already created as an assignment, but it really should have been a page, you can actually go back in after the fact and change this display grade as to not graded and it'll pull it out of your gradebook. So fun fact with that. Um, as we go to build pages, we also always like to emphasize the, the good, better, best. And again, this is actually both pages and just anywhere you're using the rich content editor. We certainly understand that time is of the essence. And sometimes for the sake of time, if you have a file that already exists as a PDF or a Google Doc, embedding that into your rich content editor is the simplest way to go. And certainly it is the simplest way to go. Out of best practice, we do always like to point out, however, what this looks like from the student perspective. Because what you're seeing on this screen is the same file. One of these is looking at how this file would appear on a student mobile device, because let's face it, the kids are using their phones, whether you may you are or not is, is neither here nor there, but the kids are. Um, this would be what the same file looks like as an embedded PDF. This is what it would look like, whether it's a Word or a Google Doc. And this is what it looks like if it is natively built in the Canvas page with a rich content editor. What you're hopefully noticing is that it's not that this was just done in a bigger font size, but the Canvas rich content editor, when content is natively built in there, meaning you're not embedding a file, but you're actually just copying and pasting text directly in there or typing directly in there, it will automatically adjust for the student's screen size, whatever they're using. So there is really benefit of doing that. Um, so certainly it's better to have the content there as a PDF or a Word document than not at all. But as we continue to move forward using Canvas, the more you can natively build your content in the Canvas page in the rich content editor, the better. Um, 
as we continue to look at some best practices of using the rich content editor, it's also important to be mindful of, of some accessibility resources. Now, we are going to be running an entire session on accessibility in March. Um, so I do encourage you to check that out. We're not going to dive too far into that. But it's important to make sure that you're designing content that all of your students can access. It's, it's really based in that UDL pr principles. You also want to try and make your pages somewhat visually appealing. You know, I, sometimes I know it's just a reading. It's a little boring to look at. But even simple things like adding some emojis, using some a tool like Canva to have to put a page header on top, it makes it more visually appealing. And I know it may seem like we're just talking about bells and whistles, but it actually helps engage your students a little bit more. So as we look at some of these pages, you know, here's what would have traditionally been a unit objectives page. First of all, not only am I, you know, including some, some emojis to draw their attention to things, but I'm also chunking the pages a little bit. Rather than having all of this on one big page, I am separating that out to really give the students some different ways to access content. Here I've taken some videos and I've put them in a grid format so the students can quickly and easily access those review videos. It's also important to remember that pages or anywhere you have the rich content editor, it is really easy to link to other content within the course. So let me come into one of my pages here just to really highlight how easy this is to do. Um, because a lot of times I see people doing this using you know, more steps than they need to. If I have my cursor in the rich content editor and I would like to draw my students' attention to perhaps a particular module or a particular assignment, I don't need to navigate out of this page to do that. All I need to do is to click the drop down arrow next to my little link icon and select course links. It pulls up this sidebar with that allows me to decide where in the course would I like to link this to. So maybe I want to link to a particular module. I want to take my students directly to, let's say, the week of September 1st module. You notice when I click that, it flashed yellow over here. Look, it put the text right in there for me. I didn't even have to type anything. So for instance, if I want to link to a specific assignment, I can come over here to assignments and say, okay, let's do the 1960 election. Look, it pops it right in there. And when I click save, this is now a hyperlink directly to another place within my course. So that's a really important and often overlooked feature within the rich content editor. As we continue to talk about best practices, I mentioned chunking earlier. And chunking is certainly not a new term to us as teachers. We do it all the time, project due dates, et cetera. The same is true with pages. Because look, we've all been there ourselves that if you open a website, for instance, and it's really long and you're like, oh my gosh, I have to scroll forever and ever. We don't read it. But it, we're more than happy to click next 800 times to read really the same amount of content but it's a little bit of human psychology. So if you take a look at this this website here that where it's you know very scroll heavy, especially if a student's accessing it on a mobile device, the kids aren't going to read this. And yet, if you pay attention to these headers, there was evolution, there's genetics. Look, those are the same headers that are over here. That if I separated this content in, oh sorry, into separate pages in Canvas. And you can see that I'm using my indent tool and modules to indent that. The students are really accessing the same volume of content, but because it's less content on a given page, it is actually increasing the likelihood that they are going to read it. Does it make their modules look a little bit longer? Yes, perhaps. However, remember the benefits of modules are that once you are in a module, that next button allows you to keep clicking next, next, next. You don't have to go back out to the module itself. So the students will access that same amount of content without need, without getting that scroll fatigue. As we talk about engaging students, um, there's an 
Also often overlooked feature, which is one of my actual favorite features within Canvas, um, to really create interactive content. And while I'm talking about interactive pages, again, this is really in the rich content editor where you can um, where you can do just about anything or where you can use it in, in, in any part of Canvas. There is an embed feature. So I'm going to actually come into a module here and I'm just going to go ahead and create um, I'm going to come down to a test assignment here, and I'm just going to create a new page for demonstration purposes. And I'm going to just call this my sample interactive activity here. You can see I've clearly used that before, and I'm going to go ahead and open my rich content editor. So when I am edit in edit mode on my rich content editor, on the far right side, there is this cloud icon. Now, if I'm on a larger monitor here when I'm displaying this, many of you on your laptop monitors, this is actually hidden behind what I call the snowman menu, but it's the same cloud icon. What this cloud icon allows you to do is to quickly and easily embed content from other sources, including places like YouTube, Bet, Padlet, ThingLink, Google Forms, um, as well as many other websites. Now, when I say embed, a lot of people I know freak out and go, oh my gosh, I don't know how to code. I don't know embedded. It's copying and pasting. So let me demonstrate this a few ways. I mentioned YouTube. Let me start with that. So even though I know that you can click the YouTube link here and technically search YouTube, as you may have found, I certainly have found this, I don't like love the search engine right there. It doesn't get me to the exact video that I want. So if I wanna come to YouTube and Let's say I'm looking for a crash course U.S. history video. We'll jump to that. We've got crash course U.S. history. I know the video that I'm looking for. I can, I can find it right here. And okay, so I need this video about the Seven Years War. All right. Below any YouTube video, there is the share button right here. But if you click share, gives you, while well, initially it gives you the link, it also gives you the option to embed the video. Again, you don't need to, it, it's going to come up looking kind of ugly here. You don't need to know anything about it. All you need to know how to do is click copy. I'm now going to come back into my rich content editor in Canvas. Click that cloud icon right here and simply paste what I just copied and click submit. My YouTube videos in there now. And again, while I know that you have the YouTube option here, the reason I show you this other way is because, again, I find the search features in regular YouTube to be better. Another tool that you can use is a tool called FET. Now, this one is specific to my math and science people here, but this really demonstrates how you can use interactive simulations in a rich content editor to engage all of your students. So perhaps I'm teaching math. And I'm teaching my students something about um, inequalities. This is a great interactive simulation kids can do right on their screen that help that allow them to understand the concept of inequalities. And you can watch a little video here to see what it does. But if you find a simulation you like, there's this embed code. This is sort of the universal embed code. It looks like the greater than less than sign with a slash. Again, you don't need to know anything about coding. You just need to know how to click the word copy. I can come back into Canvas, click my friendly neighborhood snowman, or I'm sorry, cloud, click paste, and check this out. It's going to put an interactive simulation right in my rich content editor. You can do this same thing with other tools you know and love. Padlet, for instance. Rather than sending the students out to an outside website, sure, you could just link them to Padlet, right? But why send them to another website when you can actually have them when you can actually have them do this right from within canvas at the top of any padlet there is a share button and in the share button hey check this out embed i can copy this again this is simple copy and paste i'm pasting this in here hitting submit my padlet now lives within my rich content editor well, not, Google, to show you just two other examples, Google Forms does the same thing. So let me go to a Google Form. 
pretty sure I should have had this up. So if I go to one of my Google Forms that I have, and you know, this can be any form I have. So sure, we'll just pull up this t-shirt sign up that, you know, using whatever form you have. If you click the send button, look, there's our symbol again. I'm just gonna click that, copy it, and add same basic principle. Use the embed code, paste it in there. I now have a Google form living within my rich content editor. While not every single, um, not every single website has that embed code, there is a really great tool called iframe generator. So if you just Google iframe generator, it takes you to a website called iframegenerator.com. I will tell you this does not work with every single website, but let's say you wanna use a website such as Google AutoDraw. This is one of my favorite ones because it allows students to quickly and easily illustrate a concept, um, but they don't have to be an artist. I am not an artist, but to show you Google AutoDraw in action here real quick, I am attempting to draw something with my mouse, okay? Now you can probably hopefully look at that and be like, yeah, it's kind of a boat swoop, but it's a pretty pathetic boat. Look at this up here at the top. I'm just gonna click one of these. Oh, look, that's a much better boat. So imagine having students try to, um, imagine having students try to illustrate concepts, vocabulary terms, et cetera. Well, Google Auto Draw, there's no embed code anywhere. But what I can do is I can just copy the URL and come into iframe generator and paste that URL right here. And I'm going to click generate, because now it generates something that looks like that coding. Now, before I copy this and paste it in, I do always advise clicking preview to make sure it's going to work. The fact that this showed up like this and the fact that I can see this means this is going to work. I can make it wider if I want. So if I decide, you know what, rather than 600 by 400, I want this to be a little bit bigger. I want this to be 800 by 600. I can generate that again. But watch, I can now just copy this, come into Canvas, same little cloud icon, and click Paste and Submit. And if I save this page, just so you can see all of the cool things that my students could possibly do, this is Google Auto Draw, right? So I can start over, I have a blank canvas, I can, I'm drawing with my mouse here, this is terrible. But I can, you know, draw sunshine and Google's saying like, oh look, is it a sunshine or a spider web? Yeah, that could be either, right? Um, here they can start to play with this inequality builder. I can start to put things on here and look, I'm balancing things. Okay, here's my Padlet. They can add to the Padlet right from in here. So again, you're seeing the power of using these interactive pages. And this can be in any rich content editor. So this could be in the top of an assignment too. And then the students just have to submit a text entry saying what they learned, or they can take a screenshot and so forth and so on. There are also some really great HTML hacks. So if you are really looking to go next level with the design of your rich content editor. You do not need to be a coding expert, but as long as you can copy and paste, you're, you're good to go. Because in any rich content editor, when you are in edit mode, in the lower right corner of the rich content editor, there's the HTML option. And in HTML, you do have the option of what they call pretty HTML or raw HTML. You can see the difference as I click between the two. Um, you don't really need to know a whole lot of what this means. But if you're looking to add some extras, you know, maybe you want a line divider, maybe you want tabs. In the, on this slide, if you've accessed this presentation, that image is linked. It actually takes you to another presentation that gives you some Canvas HTML edit codes. And it does actually show you quickly how to use the HTML editor. And while I'm not gonna talk about all of these, this, does you, this allows you to do things like adding background color. Um, you can add a drop-down menu. You can add another type of drop-down menu here. You can add an information box. You can add interactive buttons. And all you are really doing is copying and pasting this information into this HTML box. So I'm gonna just paste this here and click Save. 
and it's below all of my things here. But check this out. Put these events in order. Look what this lets me do. And all of the, I mean, this text is all customizable. I just didn't while I was copying and pasting that. So think about how you can really make some really great interactive activities for your students. Finally, um, we just want to wrap up with a couple of quick over, often overlooked page options that allow you to really maximize your use of pages. And all of these page options come while you are in edit mode of a page. These options are all the ones that are below the rich content editors. Let me zoom in here a little bit so we can take a look at this. So one option is who's allowed to edit the page? Well, the default is only teachers, but you know, you can actually give students the ability to edit a page. So maybe you're asking them to sign up for topics. You can do that right within the Canvas rich content editor, add a list of topics, tell them to put their names next to it. Um, Likewise, you can make this anyone. So if you really, for whatever reason, wanted parent observers to be able to come in, you could do that as well. You can also add pages to the student to-do list. So if you have made a page, because it doesn't need to be an assignment, but it's something that you need your students to read, you want to make sure they're seeing this, you can add a due date to that just like you would to any assignment, and it will populate their to-do list in their calendar, but it won't clutter your gradebook. If you're looking to use mastery paths, um, it's something we talked about in our differentiation session we ran two weeks ago. This is where you can simply check a box to allow this page to appear in mastery paths. And finally, um, you have the option to notify users that the content has changed. So if you have a page that's already been published and you change that, you can actually check this box. So when you click save, it will send an alert to the users in your class that something has changed on that page. The final thing um, that is related to what we just talked about is the fact that pages in Canvas are actually one of the few features of Canvas that have a version history. And I say that this is related to what we just talked about because if you are going to change the permissions of who can edit the page, if you're giving students page editing permissions, it can be helpful to see what changes they made or perhaps somebody accidentally overwrote a page, et cetera. So your version history um, is available to you when you are in saved page mode. Again, it's only available for pages. By clicking the snowman menu next to the edit button and you can select view page history. And here it will give you a time stamped view and let you know, obviously this page, it was just me who edited it because I had just made this. But not only can I have a timestamp view, but if I need to restore a previous version, I can do that. Restore version, it's gonna take me back to the page. I can X out. And now when I come back to my page, you notice it doesn't have all of the bells and with the HTML bells and whistles. I've added some extra content since I made that changes, made those changes, but I'm now back to that original page. So that's particularly useful if others are granted editing rights. So hopefully that has helps you a little bit. Um, we are more than happy to give you a badge for today. If you're watching this after the fact, this yell key probably will not work for you. However, this is a link, so you can click on that. It will take you to the badge form, and you'll actually earn this little Canvas Page Pro badge for having watched this session. Um, and as always, any of your tech coaches are more than happy to help you with any of this, to help you design these pages, and really to get creative about how you can use Canvas to help engage your students. Thanks for hanging out with us today and have a great day.